everyone this is a demo of how to quickly create and deploy a project using amber framework and crystal here we go so first off we're just going to start by uh, building a project really quick in github i'm going to go with a new repository we're going to call it deploy test and let's say create repository we go over here, let's copy this, come back over to terminal and say git clone the repo. It says it's empty, which is expected. Let's see the end of deploy test. There we go. Actually, let's go back out and say amber new deploy test um, depths, which will install all the dependencies after, of course, creating this project that you see right here. Okay, CD back into deploy test. Um, okay, so we already have git, so let's say gcm um, initial commit, push that, dash u origin master. So uh, just git pushing that up to our GitHub. Okay, let's quickly create some scaffolding amber generate scaffold and let's just uh i don't know add a post title string content text go okay that's created let's add that added con added post Okay, I can make this a little bit bigger for you. That might help. Uh, it might be a bit too big. Yay. Okay, there we go. So uh, that's pushed. So now let's actually uh, deploy this. So I'm just going to run amber deploy init. And this is going to uh, go and create a server on uh, DigitalOcean and push our code to it. So right here, uh, it's telling me um, to uh, get a write enabled DigitalOcean API key or create one with the link below. I technically already have one, but I'm just going to copy this link to show you how this works. So going to type that in, going to DigitalOcean, tokens new. That comes up. As you see, uh, read and write are checked right now. So I'm just gonna call this demo deploy. Doesn't matter if it's spelled right. Okay, now you'll see it gives me this key right here. Um, I believe it actually just said it was copied as well, but let's just copy it again to make sure. Come back over here and paste it in. And hit enter. Okay, now you see this little arrow thing going back and forth. That's pretty much telling you that it's busy creating uh, the server deploy test production. If I were to go back and look at my DigitalOcean right now, I should be able to click on droplets and see deploy test production being created right here. So, so far so good. Right now, Docker machine is still just doing some things like installing Docker and some other things that seem to take longer than they should. Okay, it should be pretty close to done now, which means it's gonna turn it back over to our, our code and allow us to create a swap space which will allow us to compile crystal projects even though there's only half a gig of RAM and 
then generate all of the Docker containers, such as uh, Postgres and, okay, there we go. Uh, done creating machine. So now what it's going to do is create a swap space. Okay, there, just created the swap space successfully. Okay, now it just gave me a deploy key to go and add on GitHub. So I'm going to copy that, go back over to my GitHub right here, click on settings, go to deploy keys, add deploy key, add it right here, don't give it red access, add key. This is a secure way of allowing servers to get your code. Okay, now I'm going to go back, click on deploy test and click on clone. Click on that, copy it, come back over here. It's asking me to give it the URL for my repo. Type that in and hit enter. Okay. It just checked out the project into Amber project. And now it's deploying it by creating Docker containers. So far, it's taken exactly seven minutes to get this far. Okay, so right now it's uh, building a Docker image uh, with our project in it and creating a link uh, to where the code is. Um, one thing that we should probably go over while this is working is what options we actually have while deploying. If we go back over here, we could say Let's just say uh, Amber deploy help. If you look at this, it's telling us the options we have. We can tell it a branch. By default, it's going to check out from master, but you could give it any other branch. Um, same down here with uh, the tag command. If you uh, give it a tag to use, such as version 1.1.1 or 0 0.1.0, it will check out that tag, assuming it, it exists, and override uh, will obviously override the default master branch. Um, the other options we have are init, which is going to actually create the server in the first place. Most of the time when you're deploying code, you're just going to use amber deploy instead of amber deploy init. But when you first need to set up the server, you'll use amber deploy init. Um, next, we have the key command, uh, which would allow us to pass in the key for the uh, basically the API key for whatever cloud service we're using, in this case, DigitalOcean. If you don't ask for it, as you saw in this demo, it will actually pop up and ask you for it and tell you the URL to go, go and get it. And then we have a service, which hasn't fully been implemented yet. Currently, it's just defaulting to DigitalOcean, which is the only one that currently works. Um, in the future, we'll be able to deploy to AWS at the very least. Uh, maybe Azure. Um, Heroku is probably a kind of different ballgame, but most likely there will be a deployment thing to that and possibly uh, Google Cloud servers as well. Um, let's go back and see what's going on here. Okay, apparently it's still deploying the project. I think last time I did this, it took about 12 minutes from start to finish, so 
um, which is why we don't want to deploy the server every time. We just want to swap the code out. Okay, there we go. We're building the Postgres server right now. Postgres container on the server, my bad. Okay, we're getting really close to the point that it should exit with a working status. Most likely it's building the project right now so that I could run it. It doesn't have a whole lot of RAM or processor speed to work with, so it takes a tiny bit more time than it would take on your local computer. Okay, there we go, so that built. If everything worked, we'll be able to actually run this open command here and see it work. There we go. Um, minus some scaffolding that I thought we had created. Well, apparently I hadn't pushed that. Well, whatever, here is a great example to show how it works with just straight up deploy. Here we go, Amber deploy. Okay, there you see it checking it out again. Now up to date. And uh, now it's building the new code. As you can see, while it's building the new code, this continues to work. As soon as it finishes building it, it's going to kill the old one and start the new one. So there might be like half a second of downtime, but no time while it's compiling. If we look right here, we see it's still going back and forth. Okay, there we go. If I come back here, refresh it, there we go, we have posts. So now I'll say, hell yes. Cool, and there you see, we have a working, a working server running our crystal project, right at this IP, which we could then uh, map any sort of domain name we wanted to and have everything working and any changes we made we could just deploy in about a minute by saying uh, amber deploy um, which won't take very much time because the server is already created um, and that's that for now oh one more thing you'll see it prints out this link right here in case you need to this will actually allow you to SSH into the server And you see right here, here's the Amber project that we created. This is a DB volume, which is uh, outside of the database container, so that if you restart the container, you don't lose all the data that was in it. Um, if you look right here, Docker PS, you'll see that we have two containers running. One of them is the web app, and the other is a database for Amber. And uh, that's about it. Uh, pretty simple. Let's exit out of there, and uh, have a good night.